Hey folks! Today we're checking out Dwellings of Eldervale, an area control worker placement game from designer Luke Lorry and published by Breaking Games. Within this huge box are the components for up to a five-way battle for dominance over the modular hex board of Eldervale, including 16 factions, piles of adventure cards, and titanic monsters that roam the land. But does the fun to be found in Dwellings of Eldervale justify this massive package? Let's take a look and see! Now, right off the bat, let me just say that Dwellings of Eldervale is one of those games. It's big, it's got bits, it's got tiles and meeples of multiple types, it's got piles of factions, each with unique powers, multiple ways of gaining and spending resources, some engine building, some area control, some combat, some worker placement, and more. The inbox organization is impressive, as it comes standard with the Game Trays inserts custom built for all the bits. Game Trays is not a sponsor of Gameosity. We don't actually have sponsors, aside from our Patreon supporters, who make Gameosity possible and who we think are totally awesome. But hey, Game Trays, if you want to talk, we'll be here to listen. And if those bits aren't enough to satisfy your bit cravings, Dwellings of Eldervale can even be purchased in upgraded editions, delivering custom miniatures to replace the monster standees, metal and wooden resources to replace the cardboard tokens, and even sound effect bases for the monster minis, letting them roar across Eldervale with each step they take. And that said, I just want to make the point that the copy we were sent for review isn't the Legendary Edition, it's actually the Standard Edition, so everything you're going to see in this review comes from the base game. But if you like what you see and think you would want an even more deluxe experience, that option's on the table, so long as it's a really big table. But back to the game itself. Despite all the stuff, Dwellings of Eldervale is really a game about placing workers and building up an action engine for the key goal of building out your, wait for it, dwellings across the face of Eldervale. The map is randomly generated each game, and something I think is neat is how it is built during the game itself rather than ahead of time, so there's a bit of a sense of the unknown around the edges of the map. Each tile is either an elemental realm where you'll gain treasure and resources, or a ruin which will let you take a special action. By gaining and spending the various resources, players will have the chance to summon more units such as wizards, warriors, and dragons, as well as expanding the map by exploring dungeons, gaining potent magic spells, and of course building those all-important dwellings. As an aside, the fact that your dwellings are just your workers with little roof hats stuck on them is absolutely absurd, at least until we realized that was a simple way of showing that every time you build a dwelling, you permanently lose a worker. Once we realized that, it was only mostly absurd. Adventure cards gained from exploring dungeons will form an action pool, which you can activate as you periodically withdraw your units from the map. Strategically gaining and activating these cards is a key to winning strategy, as they let you gain and manipulate resources, score points, and even socket treasure you found in Eldervale so that you can gain their benefit over and over. Battle in Dwellings of Elderville is simple, which I admit was something of an unexpected, given that it's a game with a big hex grid and lots of meeples. Whether you're fighting monsters or just another player, combat really just comes down to a comparative roll of dice, with more powerful units like your warrior or dragon contributing more dice to the pool, and possibly some special faction-specific abilities. Roll all the dice, compare to see who has the highest value, and that's your winner! Now what I just said about combat, how it was simpler than I ever assumed it would be, sort of defines our whole experience with Dwellings of Eldervale. To be brutally honest, when I see a huge box and all these bits, I don't immediately assume there will be a good, well-designed game underneath all the production. Maybe that's cynical, but it's a lesson learned by lots of big box disappointments, where the style was the focus rather than the substance. Well, I'm extremely glad to say that we experienced no such disappointment with Dwellings of Eldervale. What we have here is a well-thought-out game that, despite its size, doesn't feel bloated. The mechanisms of the game are all individually easy to understand, and on your turn, all you're really doing is either adding a worker or pulling them back. But the simplicity of the mechanics only enhances the gameplay experience, since you really can focus on your strategies and tactics and truly engage the game and the other players. And another thing we really loved about Dwellings of Eldervale was the nature of that engagement. Combat happens, and it's a key part of some strategies for sure, but it never feels truly punishing. 
because your losses aren't permanent. Defeated units come back fresh and ready to work, and those point-scoring dwellings you worked so hard to build can't be removed from the board, so there's very little sense of loss of progress, which is something we really find exhausting. All that said, though, our favorite part of Dwellings of Elder Vale is definitely the variety of factions. Each player board is double-sided, giving you a grand total of 16 unique player factions to choose from. And the way these factions differ from each other are incredibly thematic. Like how the Stonehelm Dwarves are stronger in a fight if they have the tools and bring back extra gold from ruins, whereas the Servants of the Eyes Dragons have tentacles. <laughs> The different strengths of the factions mean that by playing a new faction, you'll probably approach Dwellings of Elder Vale in a slightly different way, giving you lots to think about each time it hits the table. And that'll probably be more frequently than you might expect, given that these game trays inserts really do make the setup and teardown quick and painless, and even keep stuff organized during gameplay. So, all in all, Dwellings of Eldervale surprised us in absolutely the best way. We found it to be easy and fun to play and, at two players, delightfully quick in tempo. The unique blend of worker placement, action selection, and area control works really well, and that production we were initially a little cynical about, well, it's a welcome feature and not a distraction. In fact, we're a little jealous of the folks who have the deluxe minis now. And we haven't even touched on the fact that Dwellings of Elder Vale features a couple of different modules and alternate rule sets right in the box, along with the solo play rules for those looking to dwell alone. To sum it up, Gameosity definitely recommends checking out Dwellings of Elder Vale if you're looking for an accessible strategy game that delivers gameplay that is thinky but not fussy, and features a little roof hats for your workers. Hi, thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, check out either of these playlists. And make sure to hit the G to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for when we publish. Also, if you like what we do, please consider joining our Patreon. I have links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next game!